Hey guys, I'm in beautiful Pensacola, Florida today giving a talk about bariatric endoscopy. So I thought, what better opportunity than to share with all of you what I just taught all the other doctors about scarless endoscopic weight loss therapy. So after this video today, I hope you take away five key concepts. Five key concepts. Let's get to it. So before I talk about any procedures, it's important to recognize that obesity is a growing issue in the US and worldwide. Plus, it's not just about weight, it's also about all the related conditions that come downstream such as high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, and so much more. And before I go into anything else, the basis of any weight management strategy is lifestyle modifications. So that means diet and exercise. No matter what procedure you choose, medication or treatment, it's diet and exercise that's the basis of everything. And the reason is because even if any procedure or medication can kickstart your weight loss program, to keep that weight off, you really need to focus on diet and exercise long term. So with that in mind, the first thing I want you to know is that obesity is a complicated disease. It requires a multidisciplinary approach targeted from all directions. It's not just about a procedure alone. That means you need a registered dietitian or nutritionist to help guide you through healthy eating, as well as other specialists to help you manage other conditions, such as an endocrinologist if you have diabetes, a cardiologist if you have heart disease or high blood pressure, a sleep medicine doctor to help you manage sleep apnea, a psychiatrist to help you manage any sort of psychiatric or mental health issues that might be contributing to your weight, and even bariatric surgeons to give you the full landscape of what options are available to you. So as a gastroenterologist, where do we fit in? That brings me to number two. Number two, and the role for endoscopic scarless weight loss treatments. So endoscopic treatments mean that we're going through the mouth using a camera, and so therefore you don't have any external scars. Currently, only 1% of all patients who qualify for bariatric surgery actually undergo surgery. So there might be a good proportion of the population who prefer not to have surgery and would like a less invasive option. There's currently a treatment gap between less invasive, less effective strategies like medications and lifestyle alone versus more effective, more invasive strategies like bariatric surgery. Certain medications are approved by the FDA for long-term use if you have a body mass index or BMI of greater than 27 with obesity-related conditions or a BMI greater than 30. Bariatric surgery is also indicated for patients who have a BMI greater than 35 with obesity-related conditions or a BMI of 40 alone. But that leaves a treatment gap in between of patients between a BMI of 30 and 40. Endoscopic procedures not only fall into that gap between less invasive, less effective, and more invasive, more effective, but also into that BMI of 30 to 40 range as well. Number three, number three. There are currently several different options available to patients who've never undergone any sort of weight loss surgery in the past. The first are gastric balloons, balloons that sit in the stomach. Three of these balloons were FDA approved since 2014, but only two currently remain on the market. One is a fluid-filled balloon, and the other is a series of three gas-filled balloons. These balloons are placed in the stomach for six months. The liquid balloons require an endoscopy procedure to be placed in the stomach, whereas the gas-filled balloons are swallowed in a pill form and filled using a catheter outside the body. Both of these balloons sit in the stomach for six months and then are removed endoscopically. You can expect to lose about 10% of your total body weight with either of these balloons. The second endoscopic scarlet strategy is the endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty, or ESG for short. This is when an experienced doctor can basically go into the stomach with an endoscope and sew down the stomach to a third of its size using a series of stitches that are placed internally. The latest studies show that you can lose about 20% of your total body weight because these sutures actually stay in place in the stomach. The third device is called aspiration therapy, where basically a tube is placed in the stomach through the skin and you can suction out about a quarter of the things that you eat. There is a limitation as to how many times you can activate the device before you have to go back to your doctor to have the device reset. Once again, these strategies are for patients who have never undergone gastric bypass surgery. The other thing I forgot to mention is that some patients might not be able to undergo bariatric surgery because they may exceed the weight limit for bariatric surgery. Other patients may also be too sick to undergo surgery. For instance, those patients who might need an organ transplant. Now, some patients have had bariatric surgery before, but have since 
regained weight. Surgery can often be very tricky in these patients and so there are other endoscopic scarless techniques that we can use to help people lose weight once again. That brings me to number four. Re number four, revision of gastric bypass surgery. So in patients who've undergone gastric bypass surgery, the stomach pouch is connected to the small intestine at the gastrojejunal anastomosis or the stoma. This outlet can stretch out over time and studies have shown that the degree to which it's been stretched out over time is related to how much weight you can regain. So what we can do endoscopically is that we can go back down into the stomach pouch and experienced doctors can then sew down this outlet so that you're basically restoring the original size of the outlet. Patients can feel full again and begin losing weight once again. And number, and number five, number five, there are many other devices that are currently in development, some of which are going through the FDA approval process. Some of these devices are focused on the stomach, some of them on the small intestine, and more. Some of these devices include balloons that are adjustable, a balloon that can self-deflate, a device that intermittently blocks off the flow of food from the stomach into the small intestine. Another device is a flexible plastic tube that sits in the small intestine where food can pass through without getting absorbed, magnets that can basically link up two sections of small bowel and create a natural bypass tract, devices that pinch off parts of the stomach so that you're reducing the volume of the stomach, and also devices that are targeted towards certain conditions like diabetes and not just for obesity in general. One of these devices actually resurfaces the small intestine lining to help treat diabetes. Diet and life, again, diet and lifestyle modification are the basis for any weight management strategy. Number one, obesity is a complicated disease that requires a multi-targeted approach in order to be optimally successful. Number two, obesity is currently undertreated and scarless endoscopic options are not just cosmetic, they actually have a role in addressing a treatment gap. Number three, there are several FDA approved scarless endoscopic weight loss procedures available to you. Number four, for those who've had gastric bypass surgery in the past and have since regained weight, there are endoscopic options available to you. Number five, there are many devices in development, some of which are undergoing the FDA approval process as we speak, so expect to see a lot of new technology coming over the horizon. So guys, I hope you liked this video today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Please follow me on all my social media channels at Austin Chang MD and check out my website, austinchang.com. Now I have one more day here in Pensacola, Florida before heading back up north to Philadelphia where the temperature I think is a little bit colder, but the sun is setting right now and I will catch you guys in my next video soon. Bye.